Hello everyone, it's Mish here, and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new or returning, <clears throat> I'm so glad to have you. And yeah, thanks for stopping by. I hope you come back for more and you like and subscribe. But today I'm going to be doing some more work in my Daphne's Diary Glue Book Journal. If you've been following me, you notice there's some differences already. So the first thing is that I have actually bound in my signatures now. So that's all, they're all tight and into my spine. I did use a hidden uh, spine and I'll can discuss that in, in a minute. I've also did a little um, side uh, decorating. So I've put down some lace. Uh, then I had this really wide ribbon that um, that's about two, just over two inches, I think. And then I just went to, I think the same Daphne's diary that I actually made the journal from and took a little piece of that cover just to go on the side, which I really love. And then back when we did our <clears throat> page that had the beaded butterflies, which was this page here, which I absolutely love. I then made a little dangle for my journal, but I had just set it aside. And now that I have got things more together, I've, I've put it back and I just put on my little dangle things that I just really re resonate with me. The number three uh, it has a significance, uh, keys, of course, the, the bees, the bears, the little flowers, the pinks and teals are kind of my palette. So I put that on. Um, I've also put some hardware for a closure. So I've got the hardware on the front and the back. And the way I did that is these are just the picture hanging triangles. And I poked through some brads and I just put them through with a couple brads. And for right now, I'm not sure what I want to actually use as a closure. I'm thinking that I'll put some chain or something there. Um, but for now, I'm just closing it with the twine. And then here's how the hidden spine works. You actually take your signatures, you sew them onto a another uh, kind of like a false spine. And then once they're all sewn in, you then attach it to your cover, which is what I've done. And here's just my little flaps, which I will be decorating over top of them. I did put this in white in hindsight. I kind of wish now I had a gone with pink or something that's going to blend in a little bit more. I could distress that, but I'm not really worried about it. Once I get uh, my decorating on for the front and the, the back, I'll only see a little bit of that white and that's fine with me. If you are new here, I will be doing a flip through probably in a couple more weeks once I fill up the remaining pages. But there are tutorials for all of the pages in my playlist of Daphne's Diary um, Glue Book Journal. So what I thought to do today, oh, this is the one we did last week. And I just absolutely adore that one. Every time I open it, it just glitters and, and it's just so lovely. And I tried to make it interactive as well as uh, just some basic collages, but also interactive things. And, and when I go through it, it just... I just really love it but so what I thought I would do for the front and back covers is I went to the latest edition that I have now I know number four is probably is out now it was released on May 28th but I won't get it here in Canada probably for at least another week or so so I'm still working with number three and that's fine there's a, still a lot of projects left um, in this one that I have some ideas for so um, so that's that's a good thing but the pages that I'm going to use out of this one, I've actually taken out already, um, which, and I've made, I'll get to that in a second. So this is page 43 and 40, it came out of this section here, which flowers match your personality. So I really wanted to do something with this because I felt that I could do something on the front and back. There was enough material here that I could do something with it. So I was sitting thinking, well, what would I, what, what, what would I like? And what I thought about is that I made another copy. This is for my personal use. So I'm not selling this or giving it away. Um, otherwise, you know, you would be copyright, I think. But so what I want to do is on the front, I want to take one of the pages and then I want to lay that down sort of as a, a pocketed background but I want to cut the image out and then put some window film so that when I make my journal card then the journal card will sit like it's just part of the image 
until you actually pull it out and realize, well, I'm, you're going to realize there's a window because it's going to be shiny, but that's kind of my idea. So what I need to do is go away and figure it all out. But one thing that's really helpful, and again, if you've been watching me, you know that I keep a little bag of uh, vellum templates that I can, different sizes that I can put down. And this size here is the size of my page my, my uh, and the front and back cover. So what I did is I just went along and tried to audition some of the pages. And what I thought I would work with is I absolutely love violets and echinacea. And this actually fits well that if I cut it out, that will, that will sit well as the page without much overlap from something else. So I'm definitely going with that as the front or the back cover. And then I really love Gerbera, but it just really didn't fit. There was too much interference by things. And um, so I decided to go with the carnation and the lily. And again, if you've been watching my channels, my, I have a lot of lilies in my yard that are, that are now just blah, just about to go in craziness, which is awesome because they were being eaten alive by these red beetle lilies, lily beetles. Um, and I was diligent in getting out there and trying to get them all off. But, um, but so they're, they're thriving. And then I do have carnations, uh, little um, perennials in my yard that I just bought this year and they're little pink carnations, just like that. So I think that these would have significance uh, for me when I look back. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and figure out exactly how I wanna cut this out and how I want to make my journal cards. And then once I get a better idea, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and the idea, I kinda changed my idea to something that I liked better in that I thought I would love to have a shaker card. So I just love the sequence and all the shimmer. So in this one here, I just used some little flowers that I had, some little um, butterflies. Uh, I did this more in a lavender, this more sort of in the green and echinacea. And I just love how that turns out. And as I'm turning the page, it will give that little rattle of of, uh, of sequence. So that's all I need to do is get that fixed into place. So I decided to go with the violet and echinacea on the front because I love that one. And then on the back, we'll go through my little process. So uh, first of all, I took my little cutting uh, mat and my knife and I just took one of the images. This one is that happens to be the one that I photocopied and I just roughly cut out the, the flower. So in this one here, I actually cut out the flower and the girl um, just because it was in the front and I thought that I would, I'd like that as well. And besides the flowers were right small. So I actually cut out both, both of those for the front. But for the back, I'm just cutting out, um, just roughly cut out the flowers on this one. And then I have some window film. Uh, I think I actually got this at Michael's a long time ago, uh, but you can use recycling, um, whatever. And then I just put the window film on the back. So that's my front panel. So then for the inside panel, what I did was I have a bunch of this little um, dimensional strips that I actually got from um, Stampin' Up but you could cut little strips or however you want to do your windows. But I made two little basins here where I'm going to put my sequins, but then I needed to prop the rest of the page up. So this here, which you won't see, I made a bit of a dog's dinner out of it, but oh well. And then these little squares are just ones that I had in my stash that I just wanted to, to use up, but you could use any kind of dimensionals that you had. So I just did that, get all the tape off. And then you wanna make sure that your wells are contained, otherwise your sequence will uh, just fall out and down in, into the page. So I think I've got those quite well contained. And then I made for the, carnation one, I just made a little mix 
and you do need to be careful it really ooh that might be too much uh, it doesn't stick to the to the sides and then for the lily I want a little bit more rusty color and that looks like a lot but it will well I I didn't put as much in the front as I would have liked once I got it all together so I thought for the back one I'm just gonna stuff it full because you can't in my world have enough bling 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 um, okay so then just to reinforce I'm gonna take some of my Tombow glue and just kind of go around the edges there just to make sure that it's nice and sealed and then I'm just going to, when I get this all down, I'm just going to put on the top layer and then that's that. And I love that idea. If you're not a blingy kind of person, then you may not, you may just want to leave the windows blank and then elevate them a little bit so that, excuse my head, I know it's probably going to get in the way. Um, I'm just... So then we'll just get that down and get all your, around your little well there, just get that all pushed down well. Now you don't have to, if you push really, really hard, you may indent your paper because this, this is just thin copy paper here. If you, if you use cardstock, it would be a lot firmer. Okay, so let's get that pushed down there. So it doesn't leak out. I'm happy with that. So then we have, so when it sits up, you can see kind of the flower underneath, but as you turn the page, it will shake and shimmer. So I just really love that. Love, love, love it. Okay, so I just want to straighten up my edges here a little bit before I put it down on the front and back. And it doesn't really matter if it over if it overlays in the back because you're just not going to see it and then that's just going to go in there like so oh i really like it okay i am going to just go away because i'm sure you don't want to watch me just tape this and put this in place and then i'll be right back okay so i'm back again so i've got that um glued in and i've push down my corners. So for my corners, I use a little E6000 and when you put it down and you nestle it in, just you put the front down first and leave it at least 24 hours. Uh, you do have to have patience, but then it's pretty firm there. Um, so I just put a little bit of E6000 on the inside, uh, which I don't really need, but, and I folded it over. It is a bit chunky there just because that is a bit dimensional. But, um, but it's, it sits down okay. And then I just happen to have on my desk a roll of uh, ribbon that I got at Michael's last week as they had, I think, a 60% off sale. Um, and I loved those little daisies. So I thought that that would look good kind of in the corner there. So I was really happy about that. So you can, you can hear the sort of the shake, shake, shake. You can see it though, trust me. Um, and then for the back, I did the same thing. I just put it in and then I put a little bit of daisy strip there. I think I might do something in this corner here too. When I put this down, I actually pressed too hard and I should have put a bit more dimensional underneath there um, just because it's kind of pushed in a bit. But um, when I finish this page, then I may kind of decorate into, into the back page. But I really love how that has turned out. Um, you just really can't even see on camera how, how, how nice that is. Um, so that's my video for this week. I keep thinking there's something else that um, I want to tell you. Um, and we could further embellish, uh, you know, could put some sequins on here or um, even, oh, I know what we can do. We could go to my all-time favorite, uh, Wink Costella, and we could just add maybe a little bit of glitter around the tag part there and then when the book turns that'll just you can't even see this on camera but the Winkastella for those of you who don't know is an aqua glitter pen 
Um, so this one here that I get is just clear. You can get gold, um, and I think you can get silver. But I do have the Nuvo ones uh, that, are, that are the metallic ones. But this one, Castella, I've been using this for years and years and years. Not necessarily this exact one. But, and it just always adds. So I don't even know if that can pick up on camera. But, no. Uh, but trust me, there is a nice little glitter with that. I will link um, it in the description box below if you wanted to check that out on uh, Amazon just to see what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I guess it seems short and sweet today. today. But uh, I will be putting um, my Marguerite Miller out as normal. I don't even know what I'm trying to do here. Uh, as normal on Sundays. And I'm really hoping to get more of my junk journal series out uh, within the next couple weeks. It's been on my agenda, but I'm just uh, with work uh, full time now and trying to get keep the garden and the house and everything else that you got to do uh, intact. Uh, there's just sometimes not a lot of time to do the things that you love the most, which is crafting. But I, if you did like this, please give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to do that. My channel is slowly uh, growing, thanks to you guys. If there's something you really would like to see, um, a project or, or a demonstration in something, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. Or I always put my email in the description box. You can always email me. Um, but until we meet again, I really do hope you stay safe and well. And bye for now.